This is an illustration of difference amplifier, differential mode gain, common mode gain, and CMRR, or common mode rejection ratio. Given this circuit with an ideal amplifier, or op amp here, and given two inputs V1 and V2, and output V out, we want to understand uh, what is the differential mode gain, what is the common mode gain, what is the ratio between these two known as CMRR. Okay, so given V1 and V2, we can write down um, delta V, V1 minus V2, also known as voltage of differential mode at input. And we can also say um, V1 plus V2 divided by 2, or the average of V1 and V2, is the voltage of common mode. So from here, we can rewrite V1 as um, half of VDM plus voltage of common mode. And we can say V2 is minus 1 over 2 VDM plus VCM. Okay, so let's name these as equations 1 and 2. Now, assuming, um, assuming op amp is in linear region of operation, and we know it's an ideal op amp, so we can say no current is flowing into the input terminals of the op amp, no current flowing out, so the total current is zero going into the terminals. And also we can say there is virtual short between the uh, two input terminals given the negative feedback we have here. So we can have V of negative terminal equal to V of positive terminal. That's the virtual short. And now we can write down KCL at this point. Uh, we can use superposition, meaning that we can separately analyze the effect of each of the voltages at the output. So we can say voltage at the output is contribution from V2 plus contribution from V1. And that would be, again, using these, that would be effectively a voltage divider between these two to get the V2 contribution at the positive terminal. And then the gain from here to the output is well known to be 1 plus RF over Rm. That's times V2. And plus the contribution of V1, that's easy. <coughs> Assuming V2 is not there, that's superposition. So this voltage here is zero. And this would be zero here. So we get a simple equation of minus Rf over Rn times, the times V1. That's the contribution of V1 at the output. OK. So now we can replace uh, V1 and V2 uh, with VCM and VDM from equations 1 and 2. So we know from 1 and 2, uh, if we do the breakdown, V out becomes VDM times uh, minus RF, RG plus RP minus RG times RF plus RN divide by 2RN RG plus RP plus now the contribution of uh, common mode voltage. So what we did was just in this equation replacing V1 and V2 with the values from 1 and 2 times uh, RGRN minus RF RP divided by RN times RG plus RP. Okay, so this is the differential mode gain because that is the value multiplied by VPM. Actually, not this one. We need to uh, move. Uh, uh, it is true. So the differential mode gain is the one that is V over V2. So we need to have the two of the denominator here. So this is the differential mode gain. Uh, and this is the common mode gain we have here. So we do have, if we define, the, uh, if we define ADM as V out over VDM, uh, which is the differential voltage between these two guys, then we get this value here. And if we define ACM as V out over VCM, then 
the value is this guy. And interestingly, the numerator here is the determinant of this matrix of RF, RG, RN, RP. And if you take a look at it, RF and RG are the corresponding registers uh, here, and RN and RP are the registers here. So these registers are first row of the matrix, these registers are the second row of matrix, that's easy to remember. Um, now we know VDM and VCM, and you can see that if we have a from, from VCM and from the common mode gain, so this one is common mode gain, and this one is differential mode gain, And from look, uh, by looking at common mode gain, you can see in the numerator, if we have this determinant equal to zero, then the common mode gain is zero, meaning that the common mode portion of V1 and V2 is not going to be amplified to the output and it's going to be nulled out. <clears throat> and to get to that point, we need to have a balanced design, meaning that um, to have ACM zero, we get to the point that RF RG Rn, Rp needs to be zero, and from here we know that uh, this has to be zero, which means Rf over Rn should be equal to Rg over Rp. So the ratio of these two guys should be equal to the ratio of these two guys. That means a balanced design, balanced differential amplifier. Okay. Uh, so if this condition holds, then the common mode gain is zero, which is well desired. Uh, as an example, uh, and by the way, CMRR, before going to the example, CMRR is just the ratio of these guys. So ADM over ACM, uh, that's the CMRR. And we only care about absolute value for CMRR. It's a sort of a KPI or key uh, performance indicator parameter for how well designed a differential amplifier is. So let's say part two, as an example, uh, imagine or assume that uh, if RF is 25K and RN is 1K, at the same time RG is 24K and RP is 1K. So you can see it's not, it's not a balanced design because RF over RN is 25, while RG over RP is 24. So this is not a balanced design. We expect that uh, common mode gain is not zero, so CMRR is not infinite. Uh, let's calculate. So we know that ACM is using this. This determinant is minus 24 plus 24, minus 25 plus 24, and in the denominator we have 25, this guy here. So we get uh, minus 0 0.04, that's volt over volt, dimensionless. Uh, that is the common mode gain, and for the differential mode gain, of, uh, we can have ADM is using what we have here, we can get to, um, if you calculate and replace the values here, you can get minus 24.98. And from these two, CMRR is ADM over ACM and is equal to uh, 24.98 divided by, which means 624.5. That's the CMRR. We can also write a formula for CMRR based on just dividing these two guys and that you would end up with, again, just dividing the general values for the ADM and ACM from these two. You can get CMRR is equal to RG times RF plus RN divided by the determinant that we just talked about, RF, RG, RN, RP plus 0.5. You can also get this value from here directly.